Hey everybody, it is Billy at Be Tough Man. I'm here at Gailey's Marine in Bakersfield, California. We've done a lot of cool stuff with them. Of course, they have a lot of legit wake surf boats. But today, we're gonna get Sammy here, our little grommet. We're gonna get her a wake surf board. This is gonna be her first one, man. She's ready to graduate, start wake surfing this year. So we're gonna go in there and look at kids' wake surf boards. Let's go check it out. You ready? Yeah, you Hey Steven, Hi, what's up, hey, man? What's going on? Man, we are here, dude. All we're right. excited. We're gonna look at some kids' uh, wake surfboards, oh, right? Cool. You yeah, said you had some? Yeah, I was just actually pulling this one to ship out to somebody. So yeah, perfect. Let me put this back and we'll just talk about some, some differences. Okay, so, cool. Um, is this gonna be just for Sammy? This is just for Sammy. Sammy, how old are you? Seven, right? You got one more year on that? Hi. Seven, right? <laughs> and uh, so she's, I don't know. I don't know what she weighs. She probably weighs what, like 50 pounds or something yeah. maybe? Yeah, maybe. It at best okay so you know the thing with kids it's it's, it's hard because you want to get a like if it was a grown-up i would say get the smallest board you can ride right so, yeah with a kid i i gotta assume that okay yeah we want to have a small board but we don't want something that a year from now that they're too big for well um correct uh, the big thing about kids is trying to get that board underneath them is very difficult if they don't have the leg strength to do it so we need a small enough board that they can force it underwater and actually stand up on the thing. Okay. Um, the downside to that is they do outgrow them pretty quickly. Um, so kind of what we see with somebody Sammy's size, um, we can definitely do a kid's board. A lot of the kid's boards are gonna max out in the 80 to 100 pound weight range. Okay, so they got uh, a couple years on yeah. them if they're yeah. you know, yeah. in a six year usually, old range. Usually two good summers and seems like boaters soon have a little bit bigger families. So you got other kids coming up in the lineup that might ride it too. Okay. So, so, um, so um, and then from there, once they hit that hundred pound mark, sometimes they can still ride these kids boards, but depending on their height and how they like to surf, they may be putting too much weight over the front and burying the nose. At that point, we kind of go to the smallest adult board that we can get usually in a skim style with a two or three inch fin on it to create some drag. So if you have, I would say if you have like a 10 year old mm -hmm. or a 12 year old, you may want to steer towards the adult boards. Right yeah, at that small, point. yeah, small adult board, um, it's generally something thin, yeah. so it's not super buoyant. Um, and that way they can get it under them easier. So we, like I said, we generally do a skim board because of the thin profile. It doesn't take a whole lot of leg strength from them. Okay. So, but as far as for Sammy, uh, something like this would work perfect. Okay. This is the Hyperlite Shim. Okay. Sorry, change the name. It's Good Days now. Good, good days. days. Yeah. Uh, but same shape as the Shim that's been in the line for a while. What's cool about this is we got the ability to run three fins. So yeah. You can run two big outside fins and have that very stable surf style of ride. Okay. As she progresses, if you want to pull out the pull off the outside fins and run the center fin, now you have more of a skim shape. Right. So a lot of the kids don't get to that point, but uh, running three fins on it makes it very stable. You got a sharp skim edge here, so it's gonna dig into the water, and uh, that's definitely gonna help create some stability there as well. Yeah, cool so, board, for sure. Uh, the boards that are a little more rounded on the edge, uh, that edge doesn't dig, so the board can float a lot, and with the kid, that can create a little bit of looseness that okay. they don't really know how to control. All right. So, uh, but yeah, so something like this would work there's, just fine. There's one option. And then um, in the same shape, uh, just different colorway. Um, this one they do call the shim. Okay. Um, so shim and the good days, depending yeah. on whether you go the girls or guys graphic. Right. Um, this is new from Hyperlite. Ooh. So this, nice, is, man. this is the wingman. Yeah. And um, this one is obviously a little more advanced. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't have that Duracell outer coating. It's more of an epoxy style yeah. board. Yeah, this feels um, like it's got a little bit of, st it's got styrofoam in it. It's got yeah. some foam board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got like a surfboard style. Yeah, yeah an open cell foam to it. Um, basically, the, pri the price goes up a little bit more too, right? Yes. When you, anytime you get surf style, you're gonna get up there a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The design's um, cool though. And they, they are a little more fragile, but the thing about this is if you notice the thickness of this board, yeah compared to these other could be a two. lot more buoyant a lot more buoyancy it's got the uh, rounded edges that, that buoyancy is going to help create a little bit of lift and uh, also makes the board a little bit faster right you know so if she does get the hang of it really quickly and she wants to get back in the wave and kind of pump her way forward yeah um, this it's got board's a, really going to respond it's got a big to, belly to it too yeah. yeah yeah nice wide surface area a little bit of channeling in the back just like they do on the shim and the good day series yeah. uh, you know the one thing i no center fin on this just oh, two uh, just two. Fins. which so, is fine though. Like I mean, I said, like, it, it does make it a little more advanced. The one thing I like about this board though, especially for youth, mm -hmm. I love the snub nose. You know, I mean, boards can have a tendency sometimes to go underwater and come back, you know, or 
if you look at these, they actually have quite a bit of kink right to the front of it because of that. Right. But but that's pretty crucial, especially as kids are learning. Yeah. If they're dipping the nose, they don't they don't recognize that soon enough to get back on the tail and get it up. They just right. kind of die. Well, I'm talking about like in the water. Here's the board coming at you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Part of the point yeah, it's, the you know what I mean? I've always kind of liked the snub nose a little bit mm -hmm. on the youth. And because, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people that have wake surfed before, here, I'll let you grab that, have, you know, you, you fall in the water, you get a little disoriented, and here comes the board, here comes the fastball, yeah. right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It happens, dude. Yeah, I mean, sure. you know, and, and you know, you got to hold your hand sometimes above your head. But I, for the youth, I really do like the snub nose yeah. stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so that's what we have in the Hyperlite line as far as the kids' boards. Okay. And uh, I'll leave these out and we can show you a couple of the Ronix ones that we have. Yeah. So, um, man, I this really is, like this. I was taking a look at this thing, man. This is really yeah, slick. Yeah, this is, this is the boys' power tail. Okay. Um, and uh, it's just basically a smaller version of the power tail that they've had in the line for a long time. No, I don't see it. This is a flat, flat surface, right? It's not, there's no channels on that, or is there a channel like that? Yeah, it's, it's completely flat, basically from here back, and then okay. we have some, some rockers. It's going to be a little loose, a little bit looser, right? No? Um, or does it not? Well, this will run three fins on it. Okay. So with three fins, it's pretty stable. Okay. What's nice about this, if you notice this profile, yeah, it's cool. thicker back here. Yeah. And that thickness runs into here, about where your front foot is, and then starts to thin out. So a lot of volume back here. Yeah. And that volume is going to allow the rider to just kind of be planted on the back foot, but still have that buoyancy and float to keep the board moving the direction it needs to. Yeah. So um, it it's works really cool. well for the adult size board. I so definitely like this. It's cool. Like, you know I mean? The Ronick style, like yeah. ledge. Yeah, right I here. like the way they do the foot pad. They kind of flipped it around from what everybody else has always done. Yeah. They have a little bit of concave this way. Yeah, that's just nice. To help the kids and that is like better. that concave helps like on, on keeping your foot in there. I mean, I, yep. like I said, I, I'm kind of a, I've always been kind of a Ronex fan. Yeah, some of them that have the bump down the middle, that yeah. really helps too, because it cups the arch in your foot a little bit better. Right. Everybody's got their own feel that they like. Yeah. Personally, I really dig the wax mat. Oh, the wax it's, mat's the best. Stand your foot oh, right on 100%. the board. I've no. had a bunch of people say that they don't really like that. Really? So just personal preference. Whoa. So then this one here, the supersonic space oddity. That's cool. Odyssey. Oddity. <laughs> that's cool. That's, it. <laughs> that's, that's cool. a song, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just a classic fist shape, uh, yeah. but in a kid size. Yeah. So um, you don't have quite as much volume in this board as you do this one. So yeah. you get a little bit more weight range out of that. A little bit wider uh, here, right, on the, on the, yeah. the front end. So that's going to keep the nose up a little bit out yeah, of the water. Kind of wider altogether. If you notice the tail of the two boards, the fish tapers in quite a bit. Yeah. Where the power tail stays nice and wide. The one thing that's nice, like, so this is like in my experience, you know, these surf style boards right here, you can really like kind of really get in there and kind of carve through the waves a little bit, mm -hmm. right? These are going to be a little bit more, a little bit more kind of like, they're a little bit more, I don't know, a little um, more spinnier. Like you can do some spins for a little bit now. Um, what do you think on that? Probably not any different than this, but, but very cruisy because of the amount of surface area. Anytime okay. you can increase surface area and volume, um, it's just going to allow the board to have more surface area touching the water at once. Yeah. Um, that does have a tendency to slow the board down a little bit, uh, but that's what a lot of people need. You yeah, know, this is going to be faster fast right here? Jittery, absolutely. This is going to be faster? Yeah. Okay. Even with the tail? Like, mm -hmm. even with the wider tails yeah. out there, it doesn't matter? So, so that fish tail is really designed to cut through the water and allow it to push through a turn. Okay. Um, and that's, I mean, that's come from the surf industry for a long time. And if you notice on some of these other boards, as we get more advanced, the M50 has that real sharp notch on it there. Yeah. Same kind of thing, just allowing the back end of the board to really dig in deep and, and power through that turn. Right. So. Yeah, very cool. Uh, can, let's show someone a board for like a young teen. Can we do that okay. since we're here? We're yeah. doing kids boards. Because uh, we definitely have parents out there where someone's going to be have an 11 year old and they're going to say, okay, what can I get for them, you know? Sure. And I'm already looking at a couple of these boards I was looking at. I was like, man, those are nice. Let's get these put up real quick. Okay. So what's nice for uh, the teen girls is um, the coal right here. I was just looking at that, um, dude. Great looking board. Um, they always have a killer graphic on this one, but size-wise, it's small enough for the, you know, the 100-pound, 100 110-pound girl that's starting to, outgrow or height on the board more than outgrowing weight yeah, cool. um, it's got a cool so, 80s vibe to it yeah i like that yeah and, and the wood grain looks really oh, good slick. In it. yeah um but yeah just a really easy that same fish style of board that we just talked about in the yeah Super that's the bigger size. version of it so yeah that's that's modeled off of this you think if a kid's transferring from like this board to this one that'd be a good transfer like you know what i mean if they if they already um, I don't know if kids really notice it that much. Okay. Um, I've had, so my kids are getting older now. My son is 12, my oldest daughter's 14, and they are finally starting to say, 
I don't like that board. I do like this board. You know, and if, and if I just take one board, they'll ride it and have fun. But if they have a choice, they are starting to prefer one over the other. Okay. And they're both different. You know, I, uh, my son, he likes one with a real wide nose to it. Yeah. He's a little bit heavier. He has more tendency to dip the front end. So he likes that wide nose because it makes him feel like he's got a little more stability out of it. So, right. Yeah. Uh, but it, it takes a while. Like for somebody like Sammy, for her to ride this board, and then go ride this board. It's not going to know. She, she may not notice the difference right. at all. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, so this would be a great one for the young girls. Um, What's this height? You got one over shim? here. Yeah, the Hyperlight Shim, like just a bigger version. Bigger version, this. right? Um, this thing has been a staple in the line. Oh, wow. And we have started so many kids off, you know, the teenage kids, young and, and yeah. starting to get bigger. Um, we've started so many of them, of them off on this board, yeah. and it's been killer. Right. Um, I also like, uh, in the Ronix line, the Carbon Skimmer has been good because we run a larger fin on that. And then uh, the Buzz here. Uh, the Buzz has actually been kind of one of my favorites for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you can ride it as a skim board or just kind of that natural surf style of board. A little more rounded edge compared to the shim. Um, so to me, a little more playful. So, yeah, very yeah, cool. The Buzz looks sick, it's got a cool graphic to it. Yeah, so, very cool. This used to be in the Byerly line and Byerly's kind of retired these days. And right. Said, hey, I'm, Let's just run a hyperlight. So yeah, yeah. There that's it is, nice. a hyperlight buzz. I love it. Love it. So we're gonna do one more thing before we go. Okay. And we are gonna look at Life Fest, right? We talked about kids Life sure. Fest. Because kid, correct me if I'm wrong, I think a kid has to have a, a Coast Guard approved, right? Is right. that wrong or right? Um can you, they still run a wake surf one? You or have they... to have a Coast Guard approved jacket for everybody on the boat. Okay. Twelve and under should be wearing it all the time. Um from that 13 to 17 range, they should still be in a Coast Guard approved jacket. Yeah. Once they're 18 and considered an adult, um, they can run a non-Coast Guard. Okay, uh, we do have a lot of kids that are wearing a non-Coast Guard. You know, there's, I mean, you guys live at the lake. Yeah. Your, your kids are comfortable, they swim well. Yeah. So the idea is, I, I mean, I think that's kind of a, a parenting choice yeah. that, you know, my youngest daughter is 10. She's not built like most 10 year olds. And so we have to run a ladies jacket. The ladies coast guards are just too big and bulky. Mm -hmm. So I do put her in a ladies non coast guard. Okay. Uh, well, let's take a look at what you yeah, got. Sure. Okay. I'm probably going to get in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you assume you're on risk. <laughs> okay, so this is our selection of life jackets for the kids. We got okay. the infant stuff. They always have the pads on top. That's a zero to 30 pound jacket. Okay. Um, pretty crucial with the babies. To get something soft and comfortable yeah like a lot of this nylon stuff this is actually a pretty soft nylon compared to most. that can that can actually uh, chap chamfer their necks a little yeah, bit sometimes absolutely um yeah. so if you notice this has a softer material here and so like this is actually meant to keep their head above water if they fall in and also this too is like a handlebar Correct. i mean a grip yeah, to get yeah. pull them out real yeah, fast so the, the idea is no foam in the back so their weight would roll them back the chest would float, the head rest. The head stays above the water, yeah. It doesn't automatically flip them over, so that is something that you gotta be aware of. But yeah, if they are face down, the handle's right here, gotta strap through the legs and yank them out of the water, toss them around a bit, All whatever right. you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so boys and girls, they're just different colorways, but the material is pretty crucial, getting something they're soft. Oh, these are cool. Are these, um, are these new so, designs for yeah, the so these stuff. are child's uh, 30 to 50 pound there. And then the next size up used to be a 50 to 90 pound, mm -hmm. um, but Hyperlite is starting to make a youth large and a youth small, just okay. to kind of split that range up. So 50 to 70 and then 70 to 90. Okay. And then, uh, so like this one right here, what it, so is this like, a, this is a youth series right here? That's a youth small. And thing. that's going to go for what size is there? That's going to be 50 to 70. 50 to 70. this is your youth large, which is going to go 70 to 90. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you know the thing is, like, you have to be careful that you don't. The, a life vest you don't want too big, because it will, um, you know, the, it rides up on them. You know what I mean? And then yeah. their head like goes under the neck. Mm -hmm. You know, so life vests. I mean, I hate to. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I've always felt like life vests are actually a little better on the smaller side, as long as it fits on them comfortably. Yeah. Whether it, you know what I mean? Because it'll. It's better to well, be yeah, around their body a little bit. The idea is, if this is up here when they sit down, it's not pushing the vest up. Yeah. The vest is down like this on their torso. When they lift their legs, it's going to push everything up into their neck and chin. So yeah. Especially if you're really wake surf, if you're wake surfing seat. too, you know what I mean? It can kind of be awkward for them if yeah. the thing's above their neck, you know, and they can't see right and stuff. So well, if you fall and your arms are up, it could pop off. So it's pretty crucial to have the right size. It can be tough for the kids. 
because a lot of kids are in between sizes. So, right. uh, but you should have to stretch them just a little bit to zip them up. And uh, if it's got buckles on it, give them a cinch, make sure they're nice and tight. All right, show us the reckless teenagers here real okay. quick before we go. Show us that. And like I said, let's, uh, don't come back to this video and uh, you know if something happens, you're on your own. But this is like for maybe like a younger teen that or a teen that you yeah, know is like. So, uh, I mean, even something. Oh wow, like, that's nice. Even something like that. Whoa. You know, that's an that's a women's extra small. Yeah, that's which nice. Though. A lot of the younger girls could fit that. Just yeah. Right. And um, as you get to some of the adult sizes, like I was saying earlier, in the Coast Guard approved, there's so much foam. It's long on them. They don't have the taper like this. So yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it's just a, a personal preference. Um, most nice people out surfing are wearing something like this generally all wakeboarders are wearing something like this yeah um it's just a lot more comfortable and if you can move easier i think you should be a little bit safer yeah you know rather than being constricted man that's so, cool it's like star wars dude yeah that's cool yeah hyperlights have some really cool designs with just kind of that clean yeah. look to them. and some of the stuff is for impact too right like rib impacts and stuff like um, i mean it helps yeah, a little bit actually the, um they ronix calls them an impact jacket because they are not a life jacket a okay. life jacket is coast guard approved yeah. And these are not. Uh, but this one has plastic in the sides oh, of it. Oh, whoa. So this was kind of designed for people that like to ride the cable park. Arms oh, go wow. up, you hit a rail, you got a little bit of protection there. Wow, so okay. Also helps wakeboarding if you take those rib shots and don't like them. Yeah. Try and keep my wings in. I like the, uh, look at this thing here, dude. That's cool looking, right? Yeah, camo's cool. For the hunters, dude, right there, uh, man. You get out there and... We've had a lot of luck with the, the Ronix party vest as well. You know, yeah. so everybody's got their own look. Like, again, in Bakersfield, a lot of people like this. The yeah. young kids like the bright colors. I generally like to stay a little more stealthy, you know, all black or all gray. Yeah, very good stuff, man. Bright colors, people recognize you. Oh, yeah, you know? see you out in the water, right? <laughs> See how bad you're riding. Now, before I leave, I wonder if we should do. Do you have any? Do you have kids wakeboards, or is that a thing right now? Or is yeah, that, yeah. Should we take a look at one? It's, Let's take a look at one. Even see, we got kids skis here. Oh, okay, well. we got the kids skis, uh, right? Skiing's kind of coming back. We're seeing a lot of people. It's really on water skis. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think part of it is wake surfing is fun. What in the world, dude? Look at this one. You have color it. Sammy's yeah. immediately attracted to it. <laughs> she says, "Look at this one. Comes with pins, and you color your own skis. That's incredible." Yeah. Yeah, so that's fun for the kids. Yeah. So, Show me a wakeboard, uh, though, before we check out of here. wakeboards. Uh, we have some girls' stuff here. Okay. And then on the other side of this rack, we have some of the junior boys' stuff. You know, you're uh, definitely, you're better to get, like, an all-in-one unit. For yeah. I mean, it, you're, you know what I mean? A, a, a kid learning how to wakeboard isn't, like you said, isn't going to be out there flipping tricks and yeah. doing all that stuff. And not that these are bad, but these all-in-one units, the price is right. I mean, think about this. This is 350 right? Does that come with the bindings or no bindings? Yeah. It does. Okay, so, I mean, if you went over to that binding rack right there, some of those bindings are going to be 350 right? Yeah. So, I mean, the idea that this is all together, it's easy, to, you know, it's not, it doesn't break the bank. We, and, we uh, do that on the adult sizes as well. When you're in that beginner, intermediate range, it's just easier to package things together. And honestly, even like the rusty board here we yeah. can package this with a pro model closed toe boot you save some money uh, the people that really know what they want will generally buy it all a cart because they may love this board but, like but not boot. like the boot that it packages with right. so um when you get to advanced levels it's all about comfort and your riding style and what you like not so much the graphics anymore yeah very so. cool man always like coming down here you always got a bunch of stuff man it's sad seeing that boat man the boats <laughs> aren't here right yeah. unfortunately well you get them in every once in a while but the thing is you just can't get boats right now right i mean let's just be real right yeah we got another email from nautique this morning that uh um, supply of resin is way down and without resin you can't build boats wow you know are they having uh, the chip problem the harnesses are an issue wiring harness okay yeah, I knew. yeah so um it's all the parts and pieces it's yeah. just trickling down you know it was um just the raw materials at first and now it's trickled down to the companies that use those raw materials to build their product now they're affected how far out of the orders right now um our tracker stuff is three to four months um to order uh like a moomba super or nautique we will get boats in the next two to three months, but they're already sold. So wow. you're having to pre-book a build slot six to eight months in advance. Right. Yeah. Does that, has that made the trade-in values go up a lot? It's skyrocket. So if you have not, a- Not so much trade-in values, but the retail values on used on boats. On used boats, oh yeah. People look at their book value and say, hey, my high book is 60 grand. I'm gonna list it for 75, they'll get 70. Right, it's you know, incredible. It's, I think I saw my boat, it's actually more than it was when it was new, dude. A 2008 Malibu, dude, is like more now than it is when it's new. Crazy, dude. The problem is... You can't get one. Yeah, you better be you, out of the water. If you sell that in order for next year, the new boat 
I mean, it's just going to cost you double that or more. Right. Yeah. So, so make sure you have another boat yeah. lined up for yeah, a good we, deal. We got some Paragons on order, and you know, just looking at these orders, like man, like to think from going from your 08 oh yeah Malibu to a Paragon or even a G23 or a, Four a times. Supra SA. You're spending 180 grand to 280 grand. It's not insane. A quarter million dollars for a boat. Whoa. And that's a boat guy telling you that. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't lying to you, dude. It's, it is what it is. We're, we're, we're blessed to have the customers we have. Oh, yeah. You know, and the people that can afford it, they have a lot of fun, and we get to join in on that a little bit. And, yeah. you know, it keeps us going. All right. There you go, man. Always a fun trip down here. I love coming down here. And Sammy, we'll surprise him, and we'll show him what board we get, right? You give him a thumbs up. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Well, here's what we decided. Sammy's got her board. We picked out the Ronex, right? The uh, Supersonic Space Odyssey Power Tail. That's going to be you. And we're going to go out. Yeah, you get some stickers, right? Yeah, and this weekend we're going to go try it out, right? You excited? No, you're scared. <laughs> we're going to do it. Little grommet. That's you. All right. Thanks for watching. This is Billy at, and Sammy at BTEV.